Hey everyone, bonjour. Mdish nakaz, misko pogi ni kwe ge elio in Lancaster, jagamashimwa. Mika nakando dam ge esh, bimbingin donjaba. So hey everyone, my name is Leora, this is my English name. My Ojibwe name is Red Pipe Woman. And I am here today representing Northern Michigan University over at the Center for Native American Studies on this 4th of July to um, do a skill swap. And the skill swap idea that we're going to do today is decolonizing our thought life. Can everyone hear me okay? Let's hope so. So decolonizing our thought life is a really kind of a large idea, a large thought. And I want to kind of scale back because there's a lot of different ways to decolonize in general, right? And decolonizing is a big and um, scary word sometimes for some folks. And the way that I think about it is learning to see the world, react to the world, and understand the world through an indigenous lens. And that can be really difficult sometimes. I mean, you can decolonize your diet, like Dr. Martin Reinhardt did in April Lindela. You can decolonize your transportation. You can decolonize your infrastructure. All of these different things, even your fashion, right? The different materials you're using for your clothing can be um, pre-colonial. But decolonizing your mind is one of the most difficult things because you really have to reprogram yourself to react a certain way. And once you've been programmed, especially into adulthood, whew, that's a hard thing to do, isn't it? An example that I usually give folks is, um, I got two boys, Quinn and Shiloh, six and nine, two disgusting, hilarious, wonderful boys. And the first time I realized that I was starting to decolonize in an authentic way was, I try to use the Ojibwe language, Odawa, you know, Anishinaabemowin, with them as frequently as possible so that it's a, an authentic language for them instead of just something cool, you know. And I remember the first time that I told my older son, Gizagin, you know, I love you, in a language without having to think about it. And that was a really impactful and meaningful moment to me. And that's authentic decolonization, when you just um, experience life through an indigenous lens. So today, to celebrate indigeneity, I want to bring cooking to you all. Because cooking is a really wonderful and deep passion of mine, and it's a very intimate thing for anyone to be able to do. And as um, people say, they'll tell you all the time, anyone can cook, even though we get intimidated sometimes, right? And I do want to highlight today that this presentation is by Tidal Track, Crosshatch Center for Art and Ecology, Earthwork Harvest Gathering, and Earthwork Music and Festival. And I want to give a special thank you out to Seth Bernard for asking um, to do this presentation, you know, on behalf of Indigenous people. And he's a really wonderful individual that always makes sure to have a seat at the, at the table for Indigenous people. So, miigwech, Seth. All right, so today we're going to do a completely new and created dish, and it's from the Great Lakes Anishinaabe Ingredients. And it's not a completely indigenous meal, but it's got indigenous ingredients. And what I mean by that is pre-colonial um, ingredients. But before we do that, I'm going to start off with some tea. And I'm going to use the world's cutest little teapot. And you'll notice I put my loose leaf tea. This is this cute little one right here. And the tea that I'm going to be using today is stinging nettle. Now you can harvest this out and about in the bush. It grows um, in many, many different places, but I'm bougie, so I bought mine from the co-op. So two thumbs up for the Marquette Food Co-op, especially during this intense pandemic. I know it's, um, it's been something that we don't really quite know how to deal with right away, and so we're learning all the time. So good on you if you're wearing your face mask and social distancing, keep going. We need to make sure that folks are safe. So I'm also going to use some sweet fern, and I'll show you a little closer. This actually, <laughs> I got this from the Market Food Co-op also, but I harvested it from their front lawn, if you will, from their parking lot. And I think that the Market Food Co-op does a really good job of, ooh, hold on, life lesson. Hey grandma, can I call you right back? I'm giving a presentation. All right, love you, bye. I tell my students the same thing. Always answer the phone for your grandma, no matter what you're doing even if you're teaching a class. 
All right, but this um, the sweet fern is indigenous to the Great Lakes region. It grows in a lot of sandy places and it purifies the soil. So it's really good for the earth and it's good for you. Now, sweet fern is really good for any kind of like stomach problems, you know, and if you have an upset stomach or you have like IBS, things like that, it helps out a lot. You know, I make it for my little guys whenever they have a stomach ache. And I don't know if it's just um, like they think that it helps, so it helps because of love or if it's actually, you know, if they have a stomach ache. But I'm going to add this into my tea also. So that's just a stinging nettle and sweet fern so far. And sweet fern, you can, if you're in the market area, you can go to Sands Plains. They have tons and tons. But I was saying before my grandma called, the um, market co-op does a really good job with their landscaping and using indigenous plants to the Great Lakes region, which is wonderful because it supports our pollinators in the area and it doesn't push out those really good pollinators. All right, I'm going to put the top on that. And the dishes that we're going to be making today are um, something created, like I said, something completely new. And it is stuffed grape leaves with also a kind of to spin on it, stuffed pumpkin leaves. Now, how many of you out there, go ahead and um, either comment or give a like, how many of you have already used pumpkin leaves in the past? How many people have made stuffed grape leaves in the past? They're super fun. And you're gonna start off by picking some fresh grape leaves if you have them. I know a lot of folks are already getting pumpkins. Um, you know, they're growing up here right now. And so, I'm going to show you. I harvested these this morning for my garden. Some of them are very big, like this one here. This is a very big leaf, a big pumpkin leaf to be able to use. I would go a little smaller than that, and we're going to do something different with the pumpkin leaves also. We're going to cook them down in the same way that you would use collard greens. You know, when you have a lot of collard greens and you cook them down, you cook them down, they're super yummy and really good for you, but they're, um, they're kind of, you got to use a lot, right? And as you look underneath the leaf of a pumpkin, if, you, or if you're not familiar with them, if you haven't grown them, you'll see these teeny little pokes all over, right? These little, little spines. And unlike the stinging nettle, it won't hurt you. It won't like splinter in you, you know, so you won't have to um, go back and take them out. They won't hurt. But they are kind of, um, if you touch them, they'll aggravate a little bit. So the nice thing about when you cook them, they kind of settle down and relax. So that's um, a large leaf, an example. A smaller leaf that I want to use for these stuffed grape leaves is about this size. So you'll see here's the big one, Ooh. and the small one is much smaller in size. And when I was harvesting, I just chopped most of the stems already off, but I wanted to show you an example. All along here is very spiky too. And so when you're harvesting them, cut them at the base and also just cut these, stick them in your compost, right? So we're going to be cooking these up in two different ways because I want you to also see the difference between if you're making traditional grape leaves or if you're going to be using the pumpkin grape or pumpkin grape leaves, the pumpkin leaves because they're much different in texture, much, much different. Here's one of the grape leaves. This is Concord. And you'll see this is a really good size for it. I've cut the um, stem off also because we're going to be rolling them. But first, I've got some water that we're going to be blanching these in and letting them cool and putting them in oil. And another thing that we've got is some blossoms. We got some blossoms. This one is a pumpkin. Mmm, and this one is a squash. We've got squash and pumpkin. And you'll notice that I'm smelling them because you can tell the difference of which one is which. The squash blossoms are really fragrant. They're so good. Mm, they're like um, a very light floral and it's almost like similar to a, a, to a lilac, which is completely different species, different parts of the world, but it's, it's interesting that they both have that very light floral scent. Whereas your pumpkin, it hasn't got any scent in it. And when you're um, harvesting the pumpkin blossoms, make sure that you're finding the male versions instead of the female versions of your pumpkin blossoms because you don't want to take away from that fruit that's going to be um, you know bearing on that plant and the nice thing if you're getting your blossoms early enough is they're going to um, usually only produce the males for a little while and then they'll start producing the females so you've got a nice um, you know you've got a nice variety 
Uh, the next thing that we're going to use for leaf-wise, we're going to add these little ones. Anybody know what these are? Nasturtium leaves. And these are a little bit like peppery. Of course, I'm going to taste it. Yep, they're a little bit peppery. So these are going to be a good black pepper substitute for us because pre-colonial context, we didn't have any black pepper that's introduced to us. So I had the opportunity quite a few years ago now, not that many years, but it feels like a long time ago, to do the DDP, the Decolonizing Diet Project. And that was um, a full year-long study. Um, the principal investigator was Dr. Martin Reinhardt from the Center for Native American Studies over at NMU and uh, April Lindela. And it was, a, it was a really interesting and difficult study, I, I would say. Um, for a year long, you had to eat anywhere from 25 to 100% pre-colonial foods from the Great Lakes region. And just learning about what we could eat, what we couldn't eat, <clears throat> was really fun. And at that time, I was a new mother. You know, I had an almost two-year-old, and um, uh, it was really fun. My two-year-old was pretty picky, and it was expensive. You know, I was a poor college student you know, back with his dad. And um, so it was a really fun experience. We learned a lot about the bush. We learned what to harvest, what to be careful for, because you have all of these foods out there that can be very harmful. You know, these poisonous ones that look very similar. So you have to be just mindful and um, aware. And if you don't know what you're harvesting, then dang, you get a buddy and you go out there with them. Just like if you're harvesting mushrooms, mushrooms can be real scary, can't they? So we're gonna get started. I'm gonna grab a plate because I'm gonna put all of the leaves on here and I'm gonna blanch these ones. I'm gonna turn my boiling water down and do like this a little bit. There we go. I'm gonna just quickly put these in. Can I dish them out with this or one of these? Mm, and I can smell my tea starting. So here again, the grape leaves, you're going to blanch them, just put them in to the boiling water and they'll start to turn a little greener, you know, like they'll, not fluoresce, but they'll start to turn a really beautiful color. And as soon as they do that, it's a very quick process, you're going to want to take them out. And I'll show you an example of each one. That looks perfect. And our water is going to turn a little green too, which will be fun. Ooh, the color of the pumpkin leaf versus the grape leaf is very different. Now, pumpkins are indigenous to the Great Lakes region. Grapes, only one species, and that's the wild grape. Concord, they were not. Those table grapes that you get at the store, not indigenous to the Great Lakes region. There are, if you're in the market area, there are some grapes that grow over in Old Town. Those wild grape variety. But again, make sure you know what you're harvesting. Don't just go out there and think and be overly confident because we have to be careful. We have to be good to our bodies, you know? All right. Woo! Are. I'm going to show you the difference of how different these look. Now when they started out they were about the same color. When you blanch them they look much different, don't they? This one feels, yeah, it feels like we can still, it has like some structural integrity. The grape leaf feels a lot more stable. It'll be easier for wrapping, but this one, it's going to be, we'll have to be very delicate with it. So I'm going to do a few more of those so we can use them. And if you're, <clears throat> if you're going to be a person who's canning your leaves, that's a really good process. Say if you want to open up those grape leaves in the dead of winter or in fall time, spring time when you're really craving those greens, that's a really fun process. And it can be, you know, a family get together that you're canning all of these grape leaves together, but you're going to want to put them in oil, olive oil. Is a really great one for that but if you're using dishes like this we didn't have olive oil those were introduced again but sunflower seed oil that's what we'll be using today and here's a good one sunflower seed oil pumpkin seed oil is also 
a good oil that you can use that's indigenous to the Great Lakes region? What is that? And let's try, just for funsies, let's try a really big one. That's a big old leaf. We're going to put it in. Usually you don't want to use these huge, huge leaves just because they get a little woody. You know, much like, um, like burdock root, for example. When they get really big, it would be wonderful and it would feed a whole lot of, you know, people at your meal. But it's going to taste pretty icky. It'll be woody. It'll be a little bit too old. Those kinds of things. All right. that one's ready. I'll put it out here to try. All right, we'll do a few more and then we'll let them rest a little bit. And then we're going to start on our meat because we have two different meats that we're going to be working with today. Oh, this is a great leaf. We're going to be using um, bison meat, which is raw right now. So we're going to cook that together. Together. And we're also going to be cooking, or not cooking, but we're going to be utilizing smoked white fish, which is my favorite. Got a birthday coming up, just saying. Wouldn't mind some white fish. Oh, good, and our tea is boiling also. All right. Now, I'm going to cover these leaves in some oil. And again, I've got, here's another good brand of sunflower seed oil. As you can tell, I use this one a lot. I like to use this one a little bit more for if I'm frying things. So I'm actually going to hold off on that, and I'm going to use this one to preserve our grape leaves better. Ooh, that's hot. And you can kind of be generous with the amount that you're using. There we go. Mmm, and they smell really good, especially, I like the smell of the sunflower seed oil. If anyone is has peanut allergies, I know a lot of folks will use sunflower seed butter instead of peanut butter, and so I recognize I got a, um, a memory for that. All right. So the next thing that I want to prep is going to be some of these. Chicago wash. So these are some um, older, what's that word in English? Leeks, wild leeks. And these are from um, last year and they're frozen. So I, I still have the greens on them and I'm gonna utilize the whole plant. They're a little squishy, but they're gonna do just fine. Mm, they smell so good. Anybody like to smell of leeks? Some people hate it. I love it. All right. So I'm just going to chop this up a little bit because this is what we're going to use for our meat. Because we, in the Great Lakes region, we did not have onions for, you know, that was introduced. And so our version of onions are wild leeks. Sometimes in, um, they'll have them in fancy restaurants for a nice cost and um, they'll call them ramps. Up in the UP, I hadn't heard folks use the word ramps, but some folks are using it now. And I was um, lucky enough this year, I got gifted by um, Anthony, one of my wonderful students and also worked for Native Justice Coalition with some leek salt. Uh, if you haven't had leek salt before, it's amazing and leek butter. And what that is, is folks take the greens, they dehydrate them and they, um, you know, you crush them up real good and then you add it with salt or you just use it like that and you use it over, um, over anything that you would use for salt. Now sea salt, Salt was available to us in the Great Lakes region, so I'm going to include it in our recipes. Whereas pepper, no go. And I'm going to use a few different leeks. They're really strong, so you usually don't have to use very many. Ooh, they smell so strong. Now, if you go out into the bush right now, these leeks are not going to look the same. They're going to look much different. The I just checked them out the other day. And um, they had the bulb still there, but the flower had um, started taking form. And so that sprung up and the leaves themselves died back. So 
Another really important thing about cooking indigenous cuisine is to cook with the seasons. You know, give your body what it wants when the seasons come around. You're gonna have a much more balanced diet. You're gonna be able to get out into the bush and um, you know, harvest what's available. Because your body needs more than just Wheaties in the morning, doesn't it? All right, we're gonna chop these up good. And I would say one of my favorite ways to preserve these for later use. Oh, don't they look so good? Mmm. Is I like cutting them into these teeny tiny medallions and then dehydrating them and then crunching them up real good. All right. So again, I'm going to use some oil in with those. Into, there we go. And some salt. And I'm going to turn that on and just start to let that um, come up. And as that comes up, I'm going to show you what we're going to be using for our meat that we're cooking. And we're going to be using some bison, broadleaf ground bison. Ooh. If someone invites you over to their house and um, they're going to feed you bison, I tell that you know that they like you. You passed their test. Bison can be expensive. It's a really, really good for you food, but it's expensive. So when I was doing the DDP, I didn't get this very often. They um, made sure to do these um, cookouts every once in a while, you know, and we would get together and it was really fun, but I couldn't go as often as I would like to. So when I would, usually there was bison and it's just, you felt spoiled. It was so good. All right. Now, while we wait for these to prep, while we wait for the um, chocolate these onions, these wild leeks, to start simmering, and I'll place my meat over here. I'm going to show you another thing that we're going to prep, and these are so good. I'm just going to use the same water that we use so that we can um, use all those nutrients. And these, anybody recognize these? Let's see some guesses in the chat. What do you think these little tubers are? I'll give you a hint. The, they are a flowering plant, and they're bright yellow. What do we think these are? These are sunchokes, also called Jerusalem artichokes. They have nothing to do with Jerusalem. That was, um, I believe it was a word, I can't remember right now, it sounds very close to Jerusalem though, in Italian. And then they just kind of bastardize it to make it sound like that. But um, these little tubers here, are super, super high in inulin. And inulin is kind of difficult to digest in your stomach. Not to sound crude, but gives you gas. Nobody wants that. So a good trick that you can use is you boil these in either um, uh, vinegar or you can boil them in, uh, not olive oil, in um, lemon. And today I'm gonna add some vinegar to our water so that way it kind of breaks down because it is a prebiotic. Now what in the heck is a prebiotic? Prebiotic is something that in your stomach, it helps you produce probiotics, which is really, really good for you. And these, you don't actually have to peel. If you do want to peel them, you take a spoon, just a regular teaspoon, and you can kind of shave that off. But you can uh, just take a scrub brush, scrub them up real good. These little things here, take those off, and then you're good to go. The way I like to prepare them is sometimes you can um, put them on the stove top. You can slice them up and do that but today we're gonna boil them. And I'm gonna, I want to boil them because I wanna put the um, vinegar mixture in there. So that way, when I feed these to my boys, they're not gonna be explosive, if you know what I mean. All right, and vinegar was not in the Great Lakes region, so that's why this meal is not completely indigenous. but rather it's a, like it's a blend. And these are gonna taste very sweet once they are cooked all the way through. Usually you would not harvest these until there was a frost in the fall. 
So these tubers that are existing right now are from the year before, but they're still fine to harvest. Really good. But when you do harvest them in the fall, you want to wait until after there's a frost. That way, all of that um, inulin kind of goes to a glucose. There we go. And I'll do these two also. This one's a little bit bigger, a little bit more firm. Some of them are, ooh, this one I'm not going to use actually. This one, if you look, it's hollow. I don't know if you can see that. It's still good, but it's not, um, it's not beefy, you know, it's not big like we want it to be. This one's a little bit better. And don't feel bad about harvesting these and pulling out the whole plant because they come back like wildfire. They will really take over an entire area of your garden if you're not careful. So when you're planting them, be mindful of where they are, right? All right, so we have the sunchokes or Jerusalem artichokes boiling with a little bit of vinegar. And this is the same water that we blanched our grape leaves and our, um, how do you say that in English? Um, Kusman, pumpkin leaves in. All right. And in fact, we're going to add a little bit of this in with it. Here's a larger chunk, maybe a little bit more um, visible. This is chaga or shkitagen. And I like to use this in cooking if I'm having like a soup, if I'm making a tea, things like that. But be mindful because this is a, a very powerful medicine that folks use. And sometimes if you have heart issues, you know, it could get your heart racing. If you're very sensitive to caffeine, to coffee, it can be very sensitive, you know, to your system. So just try a sip first usually and then see how your body reacts to it. And there's multiple ways of using shkitagen or chaga. And this one, I um, like to just use a little powder. And so I'm going to use this end on my cheese grater, and I'm just going to literally grind it into it. All right. And now when some folks are making um, tea out of this, they really like kind of uh, get a chunk off of it and they boil that down. They boil it and boil it just until you can't see through it. And when it boils, it smells kind of like a <clears throat> like a soft vanilla, but a little different. Or it smells like, um, oh, what would you say? Like when you're boiling down like maple syrup, that's a really good comparison. All right, so now I'm gonna put our bison into there. Pop it up in a little bit. And the cooked bison is what we're going to be putting in our stuffed grape leaves. Awesome. And bison cooks much like um, a little less greasy than beef. Not much. It's pretty lean. It's much different than um, the venisons that you'd be having, like moose or um, what was Shashuia or deer. Good. And since, again, we do not have black pepper in Ojibwe um, territory, I'm gonna take some, where are you? There we are. Some nasturtium. We're gonna put this in as a black pepper substitute. Now the flowers are not quite ready yet outside, but they're a beautiful flower. They kind of remind me of columbine, but they're a bright um, orange and they're climbers. So if you wanna plant them, put it next to something where they're going to be able to climb. And I'm just going to put it on in. And I don't need to, like, when you have garlic, you really want to express that kind of oil. You don't need to do that with this at all. But garlic, speaking of, would be a wonderful addition to this dish. I'm kind of a garlic freak. And my kids are too, thank goodness. All right. So it looks like our artichokes, our juice artichokes, 
are boiling and they kind of taste like regular artichokes but a little different, much sweeter. Our tea is ready, so that's awesome. I'm also going to add some Labrador tea in. And this is Labrador here. I'm going to show you two different leaves. Ooh, that's the bottom of Labrador. This is the top. Now this is a really, really wonderful medicine for cholesterol. If you got really bad cholesterol, Cheerios ain't doing it for you. Use this in a tea. They call it swamp tea. It's very, very good for you. Now I'm going to put that in with these also. And again, I did put um, vinegar instead of um, lemon juice in with these. And that was just to make sure that they don't cause a lot of indigestion, or else they usually will. Next, I want to show you something super cool. I harvested these last night. These are the cattails, and I'm really excited to cook with these. I got a good amount yesterday, but not stingy. Never be stingy when you're going out harvesting. So these cattails are going to, we're going to utilize the inner, inner bits of these. And I'll show you a full cattail. Woo! And whenever you're harvesting cattails or any kind of, um, you know, water plant, you want to make sure that your water source is reliable. And what I mean by that is that you know that this is a healthy water source and you're not going to be poisoning yourself by, um, you know, ingesting those foods. But the cattail is really, really a great plant. It's super cool because you can eat just about any part of it, minus these little, um, the leaves. But these you can use for mats also. So this tuber here down in the springtime, the early springtime, that's really edible and good. That's got a good fiber in it. But right now, since the plant is already woken up, it's um, the sugars aren't in there anymore. Those starches are not as active. So you don't want to eat that right now. Wait until it gets cold out again, until the plant starts dying back, and then all the power is going to go into that tuber, and that's when you want to eat it. Or in the early, early springtime, before this portion of the plant is active, right? But this is what this awesome plant looks like. Oh, and it smells like, like the bog. Mmm, I love that smell. And then inside here is what we're going to be taking out and utilizing today. Although, if you go all the way up to this portion, you can use this also really really good for you this the there's two different parts to this two different portions here's the top where it's going to start turning brown you know that's the really iconic piece of the cattail that you see all the time sometimes kids take them and they whack each other right and they do those woof and but this part there's a secondary portion that you want to use now you can break this off this is really good for you this is gonna um, help with any seasonal allergies you have and right now, this is right before it's going to start um, transitioning into the pollen. So you'll see it's green still. You can take this, and there's teeny tiny little bits. See how it just, here we go, it just explodes, right? Those tiny little pieces. That's my little guy, Gwen. And those little pieces make a really beautiful... It's like a pre-pollen. And when you have pollen from the territory where you're from, you're going to automatically help increase your um, seasonal allergies. Like, um, you won't be as miserable as you are. How many of you got seasonal allergies out there? They're not fun. So we can take these and we're actually going to put them into our, um, our meat. We use a little bit more because this is a really strange texture that you kind of want to mask. It's not like if you're a person who does not like textures, you're not going to want to um, eat this just with that. We're going to put that on there. All right, and it looks like our meat is done. There we go. So I'm going to let this cool a little bit. I'm going to let our bird, or not bar, burdock, this looks like burdock, our artichokes go a little longer. And while we wait, I'm going to take the remainder of these cattails and show you how to process those real quick. So you're going to notice something really cool about these is there's this little jelly 
that comes off of these plants. You'll start to get it on your hands, right? It's really gelatinous. Very, very similar to um, aloe vera. If you ever have a really bad sunburn or something, you put aloe on it and ooh, feels so much better. Well, some folks say that you use that same stuff on here. If you're out in the bush and it's like more of a survival thing. If you get a really bad sunburn, take that, um, that gel off of there, put it on your skin, and it's going to feel a little better. Not as good as aloe vera, but it'll be really good. So this pukoyashk, this um, cattail, just pulls right apart. Pukoyashkit, right? So we're going to take these right apart. And keep peeling. This is fun work, isn't it? I love going up into the bush and harvesting and being able to come home and just use what we found. It's such a good feeling. Good. And then once you get to the middle of these, it's kind of like the, they call them hearts. You get to the heart of it and, oh, it smells so good. Mm, it smells like very sweet and fresh. And the, the inner is always going to be sterile, you know, because it's the inside of a plant. But you do want to wash your stuff when you get home. You definitely, definitely want to wash it. So I've peeled back as many as I can. And now, actually, I think I can probably peel one more. Ah. All right, so here's the inside of that cattail. And I'm going to probably cut up to about where that gradient starts, a little bit, a few inches above. So only where it's white. You can eat that, but it's not my favorite part. Yeah, it starts to get a little bit more bitter. But this piece, ooh, you can eat it just raw like that. Oh my goodness, it's so good. And it's really good for you. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna use these two ways. We're gonna have them like this and these long little bits and we're going to put this inside of our um, grape leaves and our pumpkin leaves when we're wrapping them they're going to add a little bit of crunch kind of like when you make sushi rolls you know so we're going to use these we're going to peel a few more and again i've washed all these oh even the sound is so good and this is a good thing in the summertime to get out into the bush Listen to the birds, listen to the lake, whatever water source you're by. Get bit by bugs. Just kidding. I hate getting bit by bugs. There we are. Perfect. And you'll notice, whoopsies, the difference in um, when you're there. Like when I say when you're there is when you are at the heart of this because the texture and the look of your cattail, oopsies, just completely changes. You have this really cool membrane where if you hold it up to the light, you can see the little sections, that plant membrane, in kind of like a brick pattern. And when you get this, it's more solid. It's like the whole core of it. And that's the portion that you want to eat. And some folks, some real skilled folks will take the, the rest of this plant, these leaves, and they will make mats out of them. Beautiful, beautiful mats. And um, all around the world, this gentleman from New Zealand said that he, they use them over there too. I had no idea. Ah. So if anyone wants my cattail reeds, you come on over and you grab them. Mm, that looks so good. And I'm seeing a little bit of that gel on there. So before I do wrap these, I will definitely want to wash them one more time. Just rinse them is fine. All right. And if you do have any good recipes for cattail, go ahead and leave that in the comments. Because the more you share about the world around us, with other people, the better that we're going to be off, you know. It's a really good way to live, you know, when you start learning of the world around you and the seasons and all that jazz. It's, um, it's a healthy and sustainable way, you know, and that's really, we need that right now. Definitely. All right. 
Another really good thing with these is you can put them in a stir fry ooh, or pickle them. They're really, really great pickled. If you're a pickle person. All right, I'll do one more. Good. Had to eat it. All right, so we've got a few that we're going to be using. Just like that. I'm going to rinse these off real quick. Hi, Mom. Hey, Mom. Bug, you want to say bushu? No. <laughs> That's my little guy, Shiloh. All right. Here, look, look. Mm-hmm. You can give them a little more if you like, though. Wake up! I have the one thing that Okay, watch this one more time. All right. And I did want to show you also how the um, plant looks, the Jerusalem artichoke. I literally just pulled it right out of the ground today, right before this morning. And you'll see the tuber down here is what you eat. That's the actual tuber. And it grows and grows and grows. And this is going to be a beautiful flower that looks just like a sunflower. And again, if you are planting these, they take over a space. So be mindful of that. They're beautiful, but oh, they're everywhere. All right. Oh, that's really, really like. Mom, how viscous. wanted your chocolate? <laughs> well, more, love them. Half hour? Mm hmm. I was playing on my tablet on my mm -hmm. cup Making a different house in Dragon City. Seriously? Yeah. I love dragons. Yeah, Dragon City is where you call up dragons and stuff. And it's also free. Dang. Yeah, but you do have to buy some stuff mm -hmm. to rescue somebody too. Awesome. Show me later, okay? I will. So the next thing we're going to do is we have some manoman, some wild rice. And this is the good stuff. This is our prophecy food, right? Learn about the migration store if you haven't already. So whenever my kids don't eat their, white, their wild rice, I say, that's our prophecy food. You better eat that all gone. No, I don't. Yes, I do. All right, so I'm going to put this in a bowl. And this is going to be um, what we're going to put into our actual um, uh, stuffed grape leaves. And... Let's see how our our meat turned out. Oh my gosh, it's so good, y'all. Trust me, go get some bison today. We want to do it. All right. We're going to also put in some sumac. And this is not poison sumac. It is staghorn sumac. And in its full form, this is what it looks like. It's red and beautiful. When you look up into the trees, you're going to see these way high up and these point straight up. And this one was harvested in the springtime, which usually you you harvest them in the late summer or midsummer, a few days after it rains. Because you don't want to do it the day after it rains or that day because a lot of the taste, that flavor is going to be completely washed away. And this is a really, really great plant because it... um super high in vitamin C. And it's one of our very few things that tastes like citrus from the Great Lakes region. And the way that you process this is you take it, hang it up for a few days to let all the bugs out, quite literally. There's these teeny tiny little bugs that just love to be in here. And so you wanna take those out and um, let this just dry out. <clears throat> Excuse me. You can put them in the oven, say at 125 for like three hours. That way it's really, make sure that there's no bugs in there and it'll dry out a little bit because this is a sticky plant to work with. Not super sticky, but you'll notice like after, <clears throat> excuse me, touching it for a while, I can feel that um, the juice is in there. And these are really, really cool because they have these little seeds on here and there's hairs. The hairs is what you want to use for your spice and it's really sour. And after you process it, you can save the seeds for a tea. Like a tea that's good with sumac is I would say sumac and sweet fern the sweet fern that we used earlier. 
it's more of like a really good evening time of tea. But this is what um, the sumac looks like after it's been processed. And I just use my food processor, literally, and... Yes. After I put it through the food processor, I would put this in here, and I would have a bowl to catch it. And I really just work my hand and let all of the hair fall down, those little hairs, and the seeds stay on top, and you scoop those out. If you don't got that, take a window screen and use it. But that is um, definitely a process that you want to do with your loved ones. You know, late at night, you're listening to music, or during the daytime, you know, when you have some downtime. Because it is a few hour process to process a lot of sumac into a little space. But it's so sweet. And it's used in a, a lot of dishes. You can get it like this. It tastes a little different though. This sumac or suma, as they say, um, it tastes a little different. One of my best friends in the world, Jamal, I didn't miss him so much. He gave me this one and it tastes so good. And his mother, um, she uses this kind in a lot of Middle Eastern dishes. So when I learned that folks all the way across the world use it too. That was really interesting to me. That made me like really happy, you know, completely different, but bonding over food. So I'm going to just take a good amount like this in my hand and put it in there. I love sumac. So do my little guys. I know they went to their dad's house not long ago and uh, my older one, Quinn, he said, can you pack me some sumac? I say, yes. We're going to use that. We're going to use a little bit of sweet fern. And you can either chop it, I'm just going to put it up like this. We're also going to use mint. This mint is indigenous to the Great Lakes region. And again, you can chop it, you could be fancy, but you can also just take it in your hand and slice it that way. So the, these grape leaves, these stuffed grape leaves are going to like pack a punch. They'll be a little bit sour. They'll be a little bit um, minty. So I have the sumac, the mint. I'm going to add a little bit of sunflower oil to that wild rice. And for a little bit of like a texture that sticks together, I'm going to add some of this. And this is the cattail. And remember, cattail, before it goes to pollen, it's easier to work with. After this, like... If this was two days later and I harvested this, this would be perfectly yellow. And you can harvest it like that too. You just take like um like a, oh goodness, a milk jug, cut a hole in it, stick it over top and tap it and all of that pollen comes into your milk jug. And that can be really good if you add it to your flowers. I mean like when you're baking that flour, your flower extender. But this again is going to help a lot with seasonal allergies. You won't be as miserable. All right, I'm gonna mix that up. And I'm also going to stick in some of our Ooh. Jerusalem artichokes. Mmm, they look so good. I'm only gonna stick the smaller ones in there. Oh, this smells so good. And I'm going to add a little bit of, where are you? Now, again, this isn't a completely indigenous meal, but mm, this is so good. So this is um, olive oil infused with spruce tips. I don't know if you can see, but those spruce tips in the early, early spring, well, I'll say like like mid-spring, when they're still soft, they are so good. So, so, so good. So now our olive oil is infused with that flavor. So I'm going to add that into there too. Woo. Good. And also some maple syrup from my folks' place. Thank you, Dad and Levi, my big brother. He's awesome. <clears throat> there we go. 
All right, we're just gonna mix that up and sea salt. All right, and then we can probably get to wrapping those grape leaves. Pieces of onion. All right, and here is the grape leaves that we processed earlier. They are. And when you're cooking indigenous cuisine, you should really have that critical mindset, you know? Think, why are you doing this? Why are you learning about indigenous foods, the indigenous peoples, maybe of your region, maybe you move somewhere and you wanna learn, but always be that critical thinker of why. Why are you learning this stuff? Why haven't you learned it before? Why is it um, so underground, you know? All of those are really important questions. And before that, I wanna show you something. Um, I had a few books that I wanted to show you about indigenous cuisine. The first one is um, the Decolonizing Diet Project Cookbook. Really, really great book. And these are completely 100% um, indigenous ingredients from the Great Lakes region, pre-colonial foods. And this is a really fun beginner's book for learning of what in the world you can eat for Ojibwe foods, you know? And this was Dr. Martin Reinhardt and April Lindola. is a great, great book from Northern Michigan University. And this one, oh, I love this one. This is The Sioux Chef with Sean Sherman and Beth Dooley. Sean Sherman got it going on. He has a wonderful following. Folks learning how to eat really healthy and off the land and, you know, really in sync with that indigeneity. So those are two great recommendations that I highly suggest looking into. All right, now let's wrap some grape leaves. We're going to start off with the actual grape leaves themselves and then we'll try the pumpkin. So if you take a look, look at how wet that is with oil. It's super workable and it's um, really sturdy. So. Maybe I'll try to go like this. Ooh, that way you can see. I'll put these ones over here. And you wanna put the shiny side down so that you have that um, the texture of the veins right there. I'm gonna get something to scoop with. I'm just gonna get a little scoop of rice, the Jer Jerusalem artichoke also. And I'm going to take some of the bison because I don't want to overstuff it because your grape will rip. Totally. And then you're going to cry because I will cry. All right. So you want to take the edges. Come on. Roll it into a little ball like that. And you want to kind of baby it along, right? Just like that. Take the sides. There we go. And the other side. Don't worry if your first one is really ugly. It will be delicious. I promise you. Because mine might be a little ugly. You always want to keep folding those sides in. There we go. So there's our first. Ah, it's so cute, isn't it? Then you just got to be all proud of yourself. Now the next one. We'll also use the actual grape leaf. Again, shiny side down. Have the stem that will core up. And now I'm gonna wipe my hands because I'm gonna use um, some of the white fish. Actually, no, I'm not wiping my hands. Let's get real. All right, so here's the white fish. Smoked white fish, one of my favorite things in the whole wide world. And be careful because all these bones are really um, prominent in there, you know? So take a little bit, just kidding, eat it first. Oh my goodness, so good. So take a little bit of that white fish. There we go. And why I love white fish so much is it has a low mercury content, which means that women and pregnant women and children are able to eat this very often. Whereas a lot of our fish in the Great Lakes region has too much mercury in it for us to safely eat, which is very problematic. Very, very problematic. So I'm challenging all of you young uh, young folks and people in the field 
of science to please find some kind of food around along the Great Lakes region that does the chelation process. I would love to know a plant that does that. That way it removes those heavy metals from our bodies. All right, so we're folding those tops in. Take that. Ah! Like that. I always fold those sides in. Go nice and slow. There we go. Just like that. And those are cute. And now we're gonna take, try one of our pumpkin leaves. Now pumpkin leaves are a little different. They feel a little bit more furry. You should probably boil them a little longer than the actual grape leaves when you blanch them. But they're gonna work really well also. And same idea, the shiny side down. Here's your core. You want it just like that. And I'm gonna take some um, wild rice mixture first. This one's a little smaller so I won't put too much in it. And some bison with the wild leeks. Mmm, so good. And one awesome, awesome thing about pumpkin leaves is it's really, it's um, prominent in some African cooking, but it's really good for lactation for young mothers. Really, really good. So again, with the same, you're going to fold it up on the sides. go and just encourage it to fold in and make sure those sides are coming along with it and there you have it and we'll do let's do a big babuma as my kids would say this one is so big all right should we make a double let's do it let's get crazy this is nerds getting crazy all right so here's the wild rice good and we'll put both meats in this one we'll have the kikamen, mompi, kikolias, gaye, bejikolias, dinche, nibi shinjin oh there's some bones in that one Good. And now let's get some of these. Ah! All right, doesn't that look good? And I'm actually gonna put some extra sumac in this one because I love the zing that it gives. And grape leaves have a lot of lemon juice in them anyway. All right. You guys ready to wrap this? I'm so ready. All right, so I'm gonna put the sides up and fold these sides over. Um, we're gonna carefully start wrapping. We don't want to rush it ever. Not like anything in life, right? Good. All right, we'll do one more. And again, there is one species of grapes in the Great Lakes region. So you can do these. We're going to do another one like this. Make sure that you don't have any bones in them. Ooh, there's some bones. And you can, of course, make these completely a vegetarian meal. You can serve them hot or cold. If you want to serve them hot, I would recommend putting a bunch of them, like 20 of them, 30 of them, for a big old party, after COVID, because we're going to figure it out. And put them all, get some grape leaves along the bottom, and so that way they don't scorch. <clears throat> you can put some tomatoes, line the bottom with tomatoes, and then put these over top the tomatoes, and I mean like sliced. And then you can um, fill it with water, put a little bit of lemon juice on, and then put a plate over top and the water level has to be over and you can boil those for about 20, 30 minutes. You can serve them hot that way or you can let them chill in your, um, in your fridge for a little while. They're really good both ways. All right. Ah, this 
one's a little bit more difficult. I think, see? Don't overstuff them. Eek! Alright. So again, there's your grape leaves. Alright, I'm going to wash my hands real quick. All right, so those are those. And now we have one more thing because we have about, mm, about a half hour left. We probably won't go the full time. But I do want to show you quickly about frying our stuffed blossoms because these are so much fun. All right, so I'm going to transport this. And get some of our oil, sunflower seed oil, indigenous to the Great Lakes Regenerate. We're going to pour a lot in because we're going to um, fry these up. It'll be very quick, but it's in, um, very similar. And you don't have to cook these. These squash blossoms and pumpkin blossoms are very good fresh too. Either way. So we're going to let that get hot. And I've got some eggs. These are just plain chicken eggs. How many of us think that chicken eggs were indigenous to the Great Lakes region? Think so? Halloween. Instead, we use duck eggs. Duck eggs are real good. Really good for you, too. They taste a little different, though, eh? For folks who have had duck eggs before, you think they taste a little different? They're a little bit more full flavor. All right. So we're just going to mix that up. And so you can really cook a great meal, really original, really healthy for you, without a lot of fancy things. You know, that's what they say when anyone can cook. Go. And we're going to get a little bit of this is in the One minute. I'm going to grab some flour. So I'm going to actually use wheat flour today. I just ran out of corn flour, which corn would be indigenous to the Great Lakes region, so I'd highly recommend using that if you have the chance. Really, really good for you, and it's less allergies. There are more folks that seem like they have a wheat allergy than a corn allergy, although corn allergies whoo, or corn intolerances, they're really intense too. And just wait until your oil is hot, hot. So right now, I guess, is there, are there any questions while we um, wait for this oil to get real hot? Yeah, Jerusalem Marta chokes, also known as sun chokes. Mm-hmm, super good for you. Nice. Thank you, Brad Kirk, for that word. And again, Jerusalem Marta chokes are so good for you because they, do you remember what they create? prebiotics in your stomach, which help contribute to the probiotics, which we super need. Really, really good for you. There's not a written recipe, but I can, I can stick one on my Facebook. I'll write it down for y'all. <laughs> All right. 
I'm gonna see if these are ready. Cause I only put a little bit in of oil. Oh yeah, that's so ready. All right. So here is, do you remember the difference to how to, um, if you're looking at these, they look very similar. Do you remember how to tell the difference between the squash blossom versus the pumpkin? Smell them. These are both pumpkin. They don't have a very floral scent right now. Ooh, hoo, 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 hoo. that one does. This is definitely a squash blossom. And the squash has a little bit more hairs on it, or this one is a little bit more just like, like um, not as textured. All right, so I'm gonna dip these in the egg wash first. Oh, sugar, I'm gonna show you the difference. Just fry one up normally, not stuffed. Then we'll bread it. There we go. And if you're a person that has an egg allergy, like my little guy, Shy Guy is um, my six-year-old. He's eggs, white or wheat, um, soy, and nuts. So I usually don't use egg a whole lot. But a uh, flaxseed replacement or chia seed is just fantastic. It works. All right, so this is completely breaded. I'm going to put it in the grease. Woo! Oh, I'm so excited right now. And we're going to also try one. Let's see, is this the... Nope. Mm-hmm, that's a squash. Mm. So I'm gonna take the oh, piece of she I am over here. I'm gonna put our mixture, our wild rice, our monoman inside of the flour itself. Whoop, very carefully. There we go. And you'll see it's all in there. The cute little blossom. Oh, it's so cute. Stuff it in there like ice cream in a cone. You can choose to put meat in it if you want. I'm going to try just like a cork. So plugs in there. There we go. So it looks like that. And now I'm going to carefully egg it. Put the egg on there. And then I'm going to um, put it into woo, the batter. And if you're doing it this way, I would say hold the blossom shut like this. All right. And then throw it in. Whoop. There we are. These take not just a very very quickly they'll be done and sunflower seed oil is a um, not a very high temperature oil so it's gonna be very very quick y'all this is better than fry bread looks like fry bread though check that out mm. Two, and now those are the squash blossoms. And now let's quickly do uh, oh, over here. We'll do the one here. Here's where blossoms go. There they are. We'll do again one um, stuffed and the other one unstuffed so you can see the difference. Oh, you know what? Should we get crazy? We're going to put some berries in these ones. I'm going to put a blackberry because blackberries are indigenous. Raspberries that you get from the store, same thing. Blueberries that you get from the store, same thing. They're good, but guess what? Strawberries that you get from the store, nope. Not indigenous to the Great Lakes region. Those are only um, those teeny tiny little ones that you find in the bush. All right, so now we've stuffed this one. And these ones, the pumpkin blossoms are surprisingly easier. 
because they're more um, fully like they're formed like a like a like a skirt instead of a a few individual ones. You know, I'm gonna get crazy and I'm gonna tie these almost together. There we go. There. And that way it's like a little whoop. My poor students. I always make sound effects in class. They're so used to them. Alright. This one is gonna be good. It'll be a little weird, but it'll be fun. Alright, I'm gonna throw it in. It's all ready. Oh yeah, that's going fast. Holy. Also, I totally took my smoke alarm down before this started. Not kidding. Yum. Oh, that is perfection. All right. I'm gonna put these over here. How about, yeah. I'm gonna wash my hands, one second. Okay. And then we're gonna salt the blossoms. Flip them over. Ooh. And again, these would be a really good addition inside the grape leaves themselves but they're still really, really good. <clears throat> All right, so we're just gonna plate these real quick. And let's do, woo, that's hot. Good. Let's take some of the actual blossoms, the fresh blossoms, like that. And then we have one more addition that we'll put on to our finished product. And this, oh, this is so good. Now this is not indigenous to the Great Lakes region, but it has to do with the outdoors. And what this is, mm, one of my favorite things in the world. It is a lilac simple syrup with mint. Mmm, so good. And we're gonna top this just on the blossoms themselves to accentuate that kind of floral, floral scent they have. There we go. All right, y'all. And there we have it. We have some pumpkin leaf, stuffed pumpkin leaves and stuffed grape leaves. And they've got Jerusalem artichokes, wild rice, um, sumac, staghorn sumac, sweet fern, some shkitagen or chaga, and do we already say Jerusalem artichoke, and bison, and whitefish, and salt. And then we have our squash blossoms. One of them is stuffed with a uh, triple berry, and we also have one that is stuffed with the wild rice and um, whitefish, and the last one is with the bison and wild rice mixture. And then just our sweet little blossoms because they are super, super good for you and they're so yummy to eat. So see, you can cook anything with very little and you can grow your own food. It can be done. So learn all that you can and, you know, give indigenous societies, communities, territories, sovereign nations a seat at the table. It's very, very needed and learn all that you can, not only about the territories around you, but all over the place. There's a lot of different federally recognized nations, a lot of um, us that are still trying to gain recognition. And so we need allies, we need accomplices, and um, yeah, we need one another. So thank you so much, um, Title Track, Seth, for um, you know highlighting this today. I had a lot of fun making this dish, and I'm going to go feed my kids. So, Nilo, Bamapi, everybody.